that's good. Welcome to my floor. I'm just finishing getting ready to go out to an event. I'm going to see Wine Mom at St. Henry Books. Wine Mom is a person. She's a wine expert in Montreal. And for the past couple of years, she's been hosting these really cool events at St. Henry Books, which is sort of a book ta or book tasting. Yes, no. A wine tasting slash book curation event. So Wine Mom will come with a selection of wines. This one is themed to Valentine's Day. I don't really know how that would translate to like the flavors of wine. Maybe like some brands or like wine names would match. I'm not a wine person, or I, I do like wine, but I'm not like a wine aficionado, like expert. I don't really know what I'm talking about when it comes to wine. Um, but yeah, so she brings these three wines we taste them, we talk about them, and then the manager of the bookstore pairs each wine with a book. And it's always just so fun. I've been to two, I think. It's really fun. It's a great thing to go to with friends. And I don't know if it'll, I, I doubt that it would be a selection to go with a wine. I mean, maybe it will, because I know the manager's a big fan of Ann Carson. But the new Ann Carson book came out last week. Um, it's one of her poetic essays collections. She's not really done one in a while, one of those, and so I'm really excited. Um, it did come out last week, and I restrained myself. I said, I can wait until I stop by the bookstore next, and I knew that I was coming by for Wine Mom, so I figured, well, I'll get it then. Um, so I hope I can pick that up. And then I'll probably pick up one of the books that pairs with the wine. Um, maybe I'll pick the one that's paired with my favorite wine. Last time I got, um, it's actually right behind me. It's actually right behind me. But last time I got Natalia Ginsberg's Happiness as Such, it was paired with one of the wines. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to head out now and come with me. And I think this vlog will be me reading Grong Norma and letting you know what I think. I never read books like the week that they come out. This is a very special treat for me. Was super fun it was really packed in there but there were so many fun people um i i was there with my friend Haley, and we had a great time and there were a lot of people like wearing first of all great outfits <laughs> i <laughs> did not dress to theme unfortunately some people had like valentine's day wardrobe ready to go unfortunately that's not something that i have um, but yeah, I had a lovely time. I met some really lovely people and I picked up one of the books that was recommended by Rachel, the bookstore manager. So I picked up A Lover's Discourse by Zhao Guo. I thought this sounded really cool. Um, the back cover does not say much at all. <laughs> From one of the most acclaimed Chinese-born writers of her generation, and one of Granta's best young British novelists, comes a witty, tender love story that plays with language and cultural difference as a Chinese PhD student falls in love with a Western man in London. That's it. Um, and A Lover's Discourse by Roland Barth is, I guess, the inspiration and I think sets some structure for the novel to take place. Um, I really look forward to it. It sounded really cool, uh, so I picked that one up, and they did not have Wrong Norma in yet. Um, apparently it's supposed to come in later this week. Shipping delays, as we have all gotten used to. So I am waiting for a message from the manager to let me know when it's in. 
just got the text saying she's here. So it's my lunch break at work right now. I'm going to go get the book. And then there's a new cafe nearby at Atwater Market. I'm going to go there and work there the rest of the day. I think they're open later than a lot of cafes in the area. A lot of cafes close at like 4 or 5, um, but this one is open late. So I'm going to see if the vibes are good. Maybe I'll stay there a little after work and read some of Wrong Norma. started reading it at a cafe. It is a very weirdly sized book for, I think for any book, but for Anne Carson, she's done a lot of weird formats of books before. I'll show you my Anne Carson stash at some point. But yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's printed like an art book. So it's kind of, you know, this thick paper. Um, uh, it's dense. It's a very heavy book for, you know, it's not that long. It's maybe 200 pages. And so yeah, we've got some little essays, some prose pieces, some poetry, and it's sort of interspersed with little pieces of art, which she's been doing for um, her past few books. What is this? Kind of like a chimera vibe. I'm getting fox. I'm getting lobster. I don't know. Like this looks like a claw. I feel like it's the tail of this thing with, yeah, like the dark arms. Yeah, let me bring it closer. Like, what is this? Stuff of nightmares is what it is. Um, I also love the back cover. Um, it's, well, it's got this little doodle. Like, I say art, but a lot of, I mean, it, it, it is art, but a lot of uh, the Anne Carson, like, art pages are kind of like doodles, like sketches. And this back one says, don't walk backwards, that is how the dead go. Yeah, this this piece on the back, it's it's from Anne Carson. It it's telling you what this book is about, but it's formatted like a blurb. Like she's blurbed her own book. Wrong Norma is a collection of writings about different things, like Joseph Conrad, Guantanamo, Flaubert, Snow, Poverty, Rogers Thesaurus, My Dad, Saturday Night. The pieces are not linked, that's why I've called them wrong. But something I think that's interesting is that it's got really huge margins. That's another thing that's kind of giving art book. It's these really huge margins. And so I've gotten my pencil. I'm probably gonna go back through the pages that I read and underline some things that I really wanted to underline. Um, I, I do always have a ballpoint pen on me, but this just, this doesn't feel like a ballpoint pen annotations book. Um, I don't know the logic there. I don't know that there is any. <laughs> and also the cafe was beautiful. Um, I had a London fog, which was not the strongest London fog that I've had. And that's okay. Um, it's just I do prefer a stronger 
latte, London Fog chai latte. So if I got that again, I might ask for like two bags or for the bag to be kept in it. Um, I don't know how to order a double London Fog. Like, does that make sense? And I also had the Persian Love Cake, which was like a rose water almond. It was delicious. It was so moist and so good. It's beautiful art. I might go back for some of the bowls. I am in the market for tiny bowls <laughs> and they had tiny bowls from uh, local artists um, and it was just such a beautifully laid out space. It's definitely a space that you can spend a long time in. So yeah, it's not something that I really ever do to go to a bookstore, get a book and start reading it that same day, let alone a, a brand new release too. So this is very exciting. So we brought up the lap desk. I'm very comfy. I'm in my reading chair. Um, <laughs> you can tell it's a reading chair because there's books all over it. I'm using this oracle card um, from the mushroom oracle deck that I have, and this is moss. So yeah, it's one of my favorite cards, tender attention old soul. It's got a beautiful lady on it and a slug. Um, so that's one of the cards I drew the other day. I really like it. So it's helping me draw some straight lines on this very wide book. It's giving textbook a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> of sky writing. It's from the point of view of the sky, as you can tell by the opening lines. This is a lecture on sky writing. Mine. I am the sky. Here follows a brief history of my life as a writer. Um, and it's great. It, we've got a preface, we've got every day of the week, and how the sky came to be. It's about time. It's about grief um death we've got a conversation with godot from waiting for godot a list of the sky's favorite things to look at it's mostly shade and then there's a meditation on shade um meditating on shade led me to ponder absent presence in general and to begin to worry about those many sky related questions which will undoubtedly remain unanswered when this lecture is finished one, is the sky blue? Two, is the sky round? Three, is it proper to use the informal second person singular pronoun to or toi when addressing the sky? And it keeps going like that. Um, it's very funny. Uh, every October I rake apocalyptic conclusions into a pile in the backyard and burn them. Um, there's a whole part about the cosmos ghost writing, and then we have a whole part at the end about the sky being complicit in warfare and destruction, and Saturday was the day to acknowledge this, and it's a Saturday today, so there we go. Um, so okay, that's I think the longest piece so far, but yeah, that was, that was really good. I'm going to be revisiting that one. All right, the verdict's in. I've finished reading Wrong Norma. I was not my favorite Ann Carson, but did I love it? Yes. She sets high standards. I definitely feel like I would have enjoyed it more if it was a little bit more coherent, if there was a theme or a premise that was more consistent throughout. But then again, that was the point of it that it's just sort of miscellaneous. She says on the back, the pieces are not linked, that's why I've called them wrong. Do we believe that as a premise? Maybe, maybe not. I didn't read them as connected. Um, I did have a lot of favorites, 
I also had a lot that didn't do much. I enjoyed our opener. I enjoyed uh, one equals one. I really liked lecture on the history of sky writing. Um, let's see, what are my other dog-eared ones? We've only just begun. And I did like this more scrapbooky piece at the end. And then our very short closing wrong Norma piece. There were a lot of really great lines. I underlined a lot of them. Um, I've got here, the most uncanny thing about my fox is whether or not he will find a door. What is your philosophy of time? The kind of pillow one does not worry about. What kind of pillow do you prefer? The sea. What to say of the entirety? The entirety should be smaller. Maybe because Wednesday had been a good day, almost Proustian, I made the mistake on Thursday of attempting to write a memoir of childhood and all but vanished into its vortex of prehistoric pain. This is one that I think would be better off being read one piece at a time, putting it down, coming back to it. I imagine you could also read them out of order, which is not usually the case with a poetry type collection or essay collection, whatever you might call these. But of course, I read it all in one go. I can't stop. I can't just put and Carson down and come back to her later. So in conclusion, Wrong Norma, not my favorite Anne Carson, but a very welcome addition to her oeuvre. Maybe not the cover though. I don't think I like the cover very much.